Okay, so the first question is uh, from Enrico. Uh, let me share a notepad so that uh, we can take notes as usually. So the question from Enrico was uh, whether, uh, how, how we can uh, come here, chat. Okay, how we can uh, the deliver the project. So uh, the idea is that uh, um, the project uh, should be uh, uploaded. So the project should be uploaded uh, on, on GitHub. Uh, we are planning to use probably GitHub Classroom, which is a tool that uh, uh, simplifies the create forking creation submission of uh, of uh, many projects related to the same. Uh, to the same base project, and um, and uh, yes, the the delivery should be uh, the day before the exam. So uh, we'll see if, if since it's a Monday, we'll we'll still have to decide the, the details. Uh, and then on the date, yes, we'll have the the project presentations and your and your and the orals. Yes. So actually, the first uh, tentative days, uh, let's write them. Should be 29 June and 13. Did I say yeah? 13 of July. So these are the dates uh, for the project discussions. At least the start. Uh, if there are many projects being many, uh, we we will probably have uh, many students uh, uh, so that we cannot fit all the discussions just in one day. Uh, but we will start with the with the official day. We had so uh, we will probably set up a, a calendar according to the people who submitted the project in time, and uh, based on this calendar, we will make uh, the individual presentation. So each of you will connect and we'll discuss uh, your project one one by one. Um, we still haven't decided if the deadline is the day before or. Uh, we have maybe a two or three days for, for seeing the, 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 um, your work, but uh, in any case, you will have uh, at least two weeks uh, from the publication of the text uh, to the delivery. But we, we will decide all this uh, when these days are final, so it will be next week. So Because we already changed them twice, <laughs> and so, so confident they will not, be will not change uh, a third time. Yeah, the project starting date, uh, uh, specifications will be at least two weeks before submission. Yeah. Um, uh, and of course, uh, what you see is that uh, they overlap. Because the the discussions of the first exam that will start on the 29, uh, it's already 14 days before the 13th of July. Of July. So the submission for the second exam uh, needs to be a bit sooner than the. Uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, we will publish the text for the second exam before we complete uh, or uh, before the 29, most likely maybe one or two days before. So there's a bit of overlap of, peop of people that maybe some already submitted the first one and uh, they are still waiting to discuss because maybe we take a couple of days. days uh, and uh, the, the 15 days, the two weeks for the next, uh, for the second date uh, already started because we already published uh, the, the text. Uh, I, we, we cannot, I think we can do any. We cannot do anything about this uh, this overlapping because uh, the, the the exams are two weeks apart, uh, and we don't want to give you less than two weeks to complete the project. So um, yeah, there will be a couple of days, uh, crazy days, in which you decide whether you have to finish the first uh, exam uh, for for the first date, uh, or maybe you have already have a, have a look at, at the at the text for the second one, and only you want to. To, to change it uh, and uh, you decide. So, but uh, 
will will try to to, to make uh, an order process uh, but uh, it's inevitable in a way that we we'll have to decide whether to go on with the first work that we are nearly to, we are is nearly finished because now maybe one or two days will be uh, submitted and we already see that the text for the next one and maybe you compare which one is easier but it's up to you basically mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, of course uh, uh, you can also I, I hope you don't need to but uh, you can also uh, come uh, or to both uh, exams okay? if the first one is not good uh, or you, you didn't you don't pass or you don't get a satisfactory score you of course you can come to the second one in that case you will have less than 15 days uh, to, to, to work on the second project but it's not something we can control no no, no new questions oh, okay sorry um, uh, no, the, um, the the project will be a complete uh, application. Uh, so you have to build uh, both the front end and the back end. But you know that 90% uh, of the effort, or 85, let's say 90% of the effort, uh, will be on the front end. So the, of course, we need some REST APIs. Otherwise, the application cannot do anything useful or meaningful. But it will be you know, very, very simple, as we already did before. Um, just uh, some database and uh, uh, and some REST APIs uh, that you should develop, uh, but uh, it will be really say, basically quick. Uh, so giving access to some data and uh, all the effort will be on the most of the effort will be on the front end. But uh, the idea is that you also have to implement uh, some backend. Um, uh, so we have to start a project from scratch or from a skeleton project this is a good question we still uh, are discussing this um, for sure we are giving a skeleton but we don't know what we are going to put into that skeleton whether only the, uh, the text or an empty project or with the text of the exam uh, in the in the readme for example or uh, already maybe a copy of a, of a database of some basic classes. Uh, um, we don't we don't know yet uh, uh, if we. Well, the only reason why we could share skeleton is uh, to ease the comparison or to make uh, the, the 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 corrections quicker, because maybe the same uh, there will be the same names or the same file locations. But since we are using the create a react app uh, uh, already the file locations are, are predefined so um, they would be I, I would say that we we pretty empty uh, so you can do whatever you want and you can and if we give you a skeleton you are also free to modify it uh, if you want uh, uh, to change something so it's not there's nothing rigid we will uh, uh, think about uh, uh, the functionality of the application and you can, you can uh, and you can uh, um, organize the work uh, as you want. Uh, this is a good question, actually, uh, from uh, Kuba, who ask, was asking uh, what will be rated in, in the project. Um, well, first of all, functionality. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does it do what it needs to do. Uh, does it implement the required functionalities correctly? Does it have any functional bugs and so on? So that will be the first, uh, the first criteria is uh, uh, correct functionality. So no bugs, uh, so complete uh, function, uh, functionality. No bugs, no, no exceptions. And so on. That will be the first one. 
and the second uh, would be of course the the uh, let's say code quality so uh, mainly the the code organization organization of the of the of the code uh, how you split on the components into classes are organized so it should be easy to read clean and so on uh, performance not so much so maybe i would put on a third level both the performance i mean uh, we are not uh, metering with the clock uh, but of course if you make some bad choices uh, that will be apparent. So performance should be normal. Don't optimize for performance, but don't make choices that will make the performance uh, radically bad. Okay. So on performance and security and are again uh, the auditor level. Well, security means basically error checking. Error checking is an infinite alley, so we, uh, it's, it's never done, but at least some, some basic error checking. So you, if you forget the day, some data, if you enter some invalid data, but it's something that the, the forms, the front end is normally doing, uh, uh, but a, a bit of, of checking on the, on the REST APIs and so on. But this, is, from my point of view, is at the third level. Uh, because it is something that can always be added on when you have more time. But it, I, I would prefer to have a, a, some clean project where it's clear what you're doing, clear what, that you have a good design in mind and you organize your work uh, well in, a, in an understandable way, not, not having a you know, long function with totally unreadable. That also would imply that there are a lot of hidden bugs. Okay. So I would prefer to have a well-organized project rather than a project with uh, 20 milliseconds uh, faster or, or or three error checks more. So this is the, but uh, we'll try, uh, it is a good point actually. We'll, uh, we need uh, to be explicit about that uh, in, the, in the, we are writing a document uh, for explaining, for organizing the exam. And this is a point that we were a bit uh, neglecting. So we, we will be more explicit about that. But what are the criteria for evaluation? And also, of course, uh, there will be evaluation of uh, uh, the discussion hmm? because basically the the exam is uh, is made of the discussion that you that you make all over your project. So how well you are you know uh, your project, how well uh, you understood it, and uh, how well you know the code and are able to explain it. Hmm? Do you have any other pending topics? Or otherwise? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't get uh, what you mean by minus time and development uh, in general or for your project development. Uh, in general, but it will also apply to the project, uh, uh, usually is what the, the software engineering people are, um, are explaining you. So I know that uh, uh, some are using more agile processes uh, so that they can go uh, they give themselves uh, different uh, blocks or different sprints uh, in, in each block of maybe a few days. Uh, they want to implement uh, some functionality and then we move on to the next one 
so that having uh, and uh, usually an, an incremental development uh, is, is usually better. So having some uh, some milestones, some steps. Uh, okay, at the first step, I I want to have these uh, these functionalities. I focus on those and try to get them working. And then the next step, I will transform the application by adding new functionalities and so on. So it's always to have uh, it's always better to have a small working application and then to grow it by adding functionalities rather than saying, okay, I'm doing all the back end or all the front end or all the, the graphical part uh, and then maybe losing too much time in that part and uh, being well, getting behind in the rest of the project. So it's always, I, I imagine that as a, something that's expanding. So uh, implement some basic functionalities some the, the core ones, uh, front end and back end. When it's working, move on and add, add new functions. So it's basically breaking down all the functionality that you need in, in, a, in an order list and start implementing the first ones. When these are okay, move to the, to the next ones and so on. So this is usually what is work better because it's very difficult uh, um, in this kind of application where everything is connected, uh, even for example, to develop the, the backend totally before starting the front end because it's very difficult to know at the beginning which are the actual calls that you want. So maybe you find that we are implementing something that is not really needed, or you are missing something that will be implemented later. So it's better always to have code which is compact, which is cohesive, code that we're working together. Don't do a lot of development that maybe will be useful in the future, not in this in these time frames. Basically, we are not creating a library. That will be reused many times. We are creating a one-time application, so we need to to be uh, focused on the actual uh, functions that, that, that we really need, that we are sure we need in some way. Uh, in in the in this React part, uh, I, I we are trying to give us a sort of a method starting from the the like, like I don't know if you had time, probably not, to see the yesterday's videos. Um, uh, starting from the interface and defining the components and from the component defining the properties and then next week we'll define the state uh, the context and so on so uh, a bit of a uh, but this is for one iteration and then you can iterate by adding more and refining that um, remember always to use uh, git and to commit all the intermediate work uh, maybe in different branches uh, so that uh, you will be also be able to handle mistakes. So if you're doing something wrong, it should be, it shouldn't be painful to go back to another version and try something different, uh, and uh, without losing the, the the previous version. So that's why it's always best to have many 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 iterations or small applications because they get uh, easier to go, go go back and you have something working. It's not not having something that. Uh, too much code developing on one part which is not yet tested or not yet integrated. That would be bad because when you try to integrate everything, it will break. The more dangerous moment in your application is when you put, every, put everything together and you discover that it doesn't work. And so as soon, if you move this moment at the beginning, as soon as possible, then you are starting to solve problems that will not be the blocking problem over the last three days before submission, that would be submission for the exam or the release of the project is the same. The last days are terrible, and you should not have you shouldn't have conceptual problems to solve at the end. So, if you want to be more formal, uh, you know the the courses that. Uh, Software engineering guys, Marco Torchiano are teaching. They are te teaching um, the methodology for agile development, which is a, a bit of a process, not too much formalized, but to give you a guideline uh, to do this kind of stuff. And with all the modern tools, especially version control, which is the key of having a rapid development.
so Roberto is asking a practical question. Is there a way not to download React dependencies for every project? Um, so when you're creating a project with uh, the React, uh, uh, let's say, create React Act, It will, it will download everything and set up the uh, dot, uh, .git ignore file to ignore the node modules. So whenever, uh, if you want to push, uh, oh, you have done it, of course, you already tried that. Uh, if you're pushing all the node modules, uh, will not be uh, in the in the Git, so they will not. You don't have uh, to upload uh, a lot of uh, uh, of stuff uh, every time. Um, so uh, when you say, for example, when you so you you can copy, move, clone, uh, push, and say your project without uh, the node modules, uh, the, the folder, which is uh, the, the biggest one, OK? And so and then to redownload everything uh, on the new copy of the project, uh, we just use uh, uh, npm install. And this will download everything. OK, so uh, the project is actually, when we move the project, it's actually very small. But when we want to run it, uh, we, we need to install all the packages uh, uh, that are needed uh, for, for running. But this, the big part, the large part, the majority of, of modules are just for development. So if you, uh, and in particular, they are uh, for by the React scripts package that will download uh, many other packages for building or uh, the internal web server, uh, the Babel translator, and uh, a real lot of stuff. Uh, if you want to um, a, a development version, hmm, you could just, uh, uh, I think it's npm build, will create a, a development um, a production version uh, with all the uh, with only the needed uh, only the needed dependency dependencies and uh, packed and minimized minified so uh, it will be much smaller uh, and you can move the project uh, and it will be uh, much more compact because we will have only the react runtime which is some some kilobytes and and your application code plus the packages that your application will depend on all the for example transpiling by babel will be already done and it will be saved the translated javascript so in that case um, of course you cannot develop that anymore because if you try to edit it, it will you will get lost in the, all the translated JavaScript code, and the, all the all the modules will be get, will be put together into a single file. Uh, this is what the uh, Webpack is doing. So all the code for Webpack, for example, is needed in development mode. But one after you create the, the distribution for the production mode, it, it's not needed any, anymore. So there's a lot of code which is not needed. But if you want to make development. Uh, uh, yes, you have to download everything in your project, unless uh, if if you rely on the creator attack, because it will install uh, whatever you want. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you, you are not forced to use that, you could also uh, install the packages by hand and configuring them by hand. But uh, uh, I'm sure that you will. Uh, uh, spend much more time in trying to understand and configure uh, Babel, Webpack, uh, and the web, uh, web server, and so on, 
um, rather than waiting for a few megabytes to go to be downloaded. If you have some problems uh, with the network bandwidth, it is possible to create a, uh, to configure NPM to download the packages from a local cache. So you can download them. And so if you have 25 um, not uh, projects, uh, 25 React projects, uh, they will all copy the locally. So you don't need to use, uh, let's say, the internet for downloading every time. They will download from a local node repository. So it's something that can be done. And also something that can be done always safely. Uh, it's always safe. Uh, to remove uh, node modules if you want to save space on your hard disk. Hmm? Uh, because uh, you can always install them everything, every time. Hmm? So when you are installing a package, this package name is uh, saved into the, um, so we'll install everything from package.json. So if you, uh, whenever you install a package, it will be, the name of this package will, will be saved into package.json. And when you do install without any parameter, it will just download all of them and all of their dependencies. So if you want to uh, save some space uh, or move a copy, you can always delete these mod modules that will be recreated equally with the NPM installed. But for development, uh, I'm sorry, you need to have all of them installed in your in your project directory. There's a hand raised by... L22 and L33, they are the, yeah, they are the lectures of this week. The three hours of this week are for uh, the React front end. And they will be for, uh, no, and L23 doesn't have any slides because it's just coding. It's just implementation. The L22 should be the React component slides. Let me check. Uh, they should be on GitHub, aren't they? Wait, uh, what application one? Course materials. It's called the uh, components. So the L22 slides are components elements JSX. Uh, so, so I forgot to upload them onto the website, probably. Yeah. So it's something that can be fixed. Um, okay. So I'm, I, I, I correct it uh, right now. Uh, why is that? Uh, L22, yeah, yeah, yeah. The link was missing. I uploaded that. Usually I do that on GitHub first because it's easier. <laughs> and then uh, uploading on the, on the front end always takes uh, 10 clicks more. And sometimes, uh, so I'm uploading them. Uh, yes, yes, they were missing. So, in web applications, slides, React components, and JSX upload. Okay. Now they are online. Uh, the idea of GitHub is that uh, if you clone that repository of course materials, uh, you can just make a pull operation and you will get all the updated slides uh, and labs, uh, uh, all the, all the say, PDF uh, documentation every time. So we, it may also happen that we modify or we find some error in all the slides and we modify them. 
and uh, if you if you just uh, clone that repository without forking just cloning that one uh, every time you pull you will you also get uh, the latest versions of uh, or maybe all the material that gets corrected or something like that so that's uh, why we are, we are caring more about uh, that because it's easier for you to keep up to date rather than individually download the, the lectures i prefer to have shorter slides by other name uh, okay, you, you, ah, you rename it uh, yourself. Okay, so <laughs> I cannot. Uh, we we renamed the, we name we named the, the slides by topics by the chapters of the say, of the course. Um, and so if you if you are doing some manual process afterwards, uh, there's no automation on, on our side that can help with that. You are breaking our workflow. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, a question to you. Uh, if you have uh, maybe any suggestions to make these uh, video chats uh, more, maybe more useful for you, um, because many times I, I'm wondering whether uh, people are really behind in the course. They, they got behind and so they are not following the chats and the, uh, the labs. Uh, uh because they are still maybe uh, some weeks back and so they cannot profitably work uh, with the current topics uh, or if people are ahead so they it's all very easy for 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 everybody and uh, so they don't need to or they will solve the the lab uh, very easily by themselves they don't need support because there's a quite a low attendance of people in the video chats and in the labs of course it's not mandatory we are not taking the names but it's uh, something that uh, we, um, if we can provide a, a kind of support which is better for you, in the <laughs> in the same amount of time, of course, uh, we'll do that. Probably this uh, location of uh, of the video chats in the in the Thursday morning, which is the day, basically after the lectures came out and before the lab, uh, um, many of you are maybe just trying to 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 see the lectures uh, and to start working on the lab. So maybe it's a bit unfortunate uh, to have the, the chat uh, before the lab. Maybe it would be better to have it in another moment uh, or or it's just fine like this. So maybe you can find that you're already, you know, uh, you, you if you feel that you are able to follow the, the course normally, it's fine for me, of course. So if you have any suggestions, here we are chatting among uh, friends or uh, or maybe also try to speak with your colleagues uh, you see that we are uh, we had a bit changed the way we are presented the topics uh, in the second part of the course is more practical one topic uh, and the exercise for showing that compared to the the beginning of the course where we had a lot of theory to cover because uh, a lot of JavaScript topics, uh, uh, and now we are everything we do is it's been more applied. So this part of the course is more practical, is more towards the lab, uh, towards the implementation. Okay, so let's do that. So uh, we'll close in a bit earlier, 
but uh, since the, there are no you know, more questions from you, it's okay. And uh, I remember you tomorrow, we have the labs uh, again. In these last uh, six weeks or more or less uh, are the most important ones for the exam, of course, because the kind of exercises we are doing in the labs uh, are actually building a project exactly like you will, uh, will build uh, in, the, in the exam. So let's keep they try to to, to exploit uh, also asking questions during the labs uh, so that we can also you know, help you in uh, in, uh, in preparing for the exam so this we are starting the preparation for the exam basically so it's not it's no more getting theory or knowing basic basic, basic stuff but it's more uh, practical preparation from now on okay so i thank you for your presence today we will meet uh, next week uh, and as always if you have any question or issue uh, the the slack channel is always open okay so have a nice day today and goodbye to everybody mm -hmm.